He was applying for a job. And he said, and the man said, okay, what did you do in the old country? And he said, I was a diesel fitter. And he goes, oh, a diesel fitter? He goes, yeah, I was a diesel fitter. And he goes, okay, you can have a job. We actually need one of those. And then about a month later, whoo, about a month later, his, his cousin Sven came for a job. And Sven said, yeah, I would like to have a job. And I am always cousin. And he said, oh, what do you do? And he said, I am an underwear maker. And he said, oh, what? He said, I am an underwear maker. And he, he said, I work side by side next to Ole in the old country. And he goes, wait, I thought Ole was a diesel fitter. And he goes, yeah, I would make the underwear. And Ole would hold him up and say, diesel fitter. <laughs>
go anywhere, I would get really freaked out and nervous because if I thought there was no God, then if someone I loved got in trouble and got hurt and possibly died, that's morbid, I'm sorry, but there would be no heaven for them. I wouldn't see them again. And that's scary, that's real. That's, that's really traumatic. So I went through a really hard time. I would come home from school every day, I would cry. I would try to read the Bible because I felt convicted by that. I felt, I felt like I was letting people down. So I would try to read the Bible, I would try to pray, but I literally would just scream and cry because I didn't believe anything I was reading. I, I didn't believe it. And that's hard to wrestle with. So um, my mom decided to take me to a Christian counselor. I remember the first time we went and we were in the car and I didn't want to go. I was, I was scared. And when you don't believe in something, you don't, you don't want to give in to that. So I didn't want to go, but I ended up going. And it really wasn't working for me. I, I still, I still didn't believe that God existed. So um, that's basically the beginning of it. And I was very unsettled with the fact that I didn't believe in God because that's what I've been taught my whole life. And it made me very nervous and anxious, and I ended up being diagnosed with a acute anxiety disorder. So here was me, here was God at this point. So that's how I felt, and it was awful for me. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody, but it's very normal. Marissa, can you describe the day of the accident? the physical effects and also the emotional trauma that you went through. All right, so I was a freshman and Lauren was in eighth grade and it was the day before Thanksgiving and we have a really close family friend that runs a food bank and the food bank got robbed. So we are, I mean, I could lie up here and say that we're always on time for everything or not. So, um, <laughs> we were actually doing our Thanksgiving shopping right, like, the night before Thanksgiving. So, we went and got some dry goods for the pantry as well. And we went and picked those up, and we got Taco Bell, and we sat in the parking lot and ate it. And I remember Laura and I were so excited to get home. Um, so, we were rushing my mom, who was watching funny cat videos on Facebook, actually, in the parking lot. And she didn't want to leave. So we were really rushing, we were like, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. And even after the fact, her and I, Lauren, talked about what if we didn't rush her, too. Which is also, if we didn't rush her by those 30 seconds, then, you know, everything happens for a reason. So we were on our way there, and we were actually listening to Christmas music. Sorry, God, I know you don't like Christmas music before <laughs> Christmas. But we were listening to Last Christmas by Wham, and we eventually got there, donated the food, took pictures, and those pictures are really haunting to look at now because it's like we didn't even know it was gonna happen. Um, just five minutes from then. And as we were getting in the car at the pantry, I remember not arguing with Lauren for the front seat, which is a miracle because we it, it's like fist fight for the front seat it used to be. So the fact that I didn't even feel like I had to fight her for it. And looking back on it now, if it were me in the front seat with the accident, it would have been a lot worse. Because she was a lot smaller than me at the time, and she got hurt, and she's taller than me. Both of them are now. <laughs> I'm the short one. But at the time, she was a lot smaller than I was. And if it was me in the front seat, it would have been worse. So we left, didn't find her in the front seat, once out in the front seat. And I remember listening to Wham, um, and we went up this hill. And right at the top of the hill, I just remember my mom saying, oh my gosh. And I look up and I just see headlights straight on. And the funny thing about car accidents or anything like that is, like, if I were to close my eyes now, I could hear it, taste it, smell it, feel it. Um, after the headlights, all I remember is the car spinning and the car landed. We were, like, it was actually lucky we landed in someone's yard, but the rest of that road is a lot of wood there. So it could have been a lot worse. We could have hit it in the tree. Um, it was really scary at the time. I remember Fred
frantically calling my friend Abby. I don't know what possessed me to it, but just I had to. I remember calling her sobbing, crying, and my mom had to actually pull one out of the front seat, the glove box, and come in and pin her to her chair. So my mom yanked her out. And we're all crying, like going insane. And Lauren's sitting on the ground with her leg in the seat going, guys, why are you all crying? She didn't feel a thing. Um, she actually broke her femur. That's one of the most painful bone breaks to ever have. And she did not feel it. By the grace of God, she did not feel it. And she's sitting there. <laughs> the funny thing is, she's sitting there, she's like, guys, I really gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> and we're all sobbing, crying, freaking out. And she's like, I really gotta go to the bathroom. Why are you guys all crying? And I ended up, a family friend ended up coming and getting MRI while Lauren was on her way to the hospital. She got life lighted. And we spent Thanksgiving with our friends. But I don't want to forget anything. Um, I just kept asking why. Like, why us? Like, we were doing a good deed. We were doing something so good for the community. And it just crumbled everything. Um, I was in a wheelchair for months. I just didn't understand why. And I blame it on something I call a Christian complex. We think everybody but ourselves. We're supposed to help the broken, it's our job, but we don't take into account that we're broken ourselves anyway. So when something like that happens, we always tend to ask, what do we do wrong, why me? But it's never, what's the purpose? Um, after the accident, I was just really angry with everything. There was constant negative reminders, and I refused to see that there was any positive in the situation. Um, one of the things that really just taunted me was just small little details. Like, I got home the day after Thanksgiving, and I went to go turn on music to distract myself. And my phone was actually plugged into an aux cord in the car, and my Spotify was still paused from the same song that was on whenever we crashed. And I just remember being so bothered, angry, upset. It just, I didn't understand what the purpose was or how there could be any positive in that at all. And most nights I was going to sleep and I closed my eyes and all I could see was headlights. I couldn't fall asleep. Um, I used to be able to ride in, in private cars without being worried, but actually there was one time, it was one of the first times I left the house after the accident and Betty was actually driving. And not, I mean, it's, it's, it's scary anyway. <laughs> but I was even more scared then. I, it took me forever to not sit. I used to sit on a car, in a car like this. I couldn't relax, I couldn't put my back back, I couldn't put my head on the headrest. I had to watch the cars in front of me to make sure they weren't going over the middle line. And if they did, I'd flinch out of habit. I just didn't understand why my family had to go through it. And it was just really difficult to understand the why. And now whenever I tell the story, I just keep thinking, I, every time I tell it, I notice something else about the story, something more positive, like the fact that we didn't argue over the front seat, or just Lauren's journey in general as well. I didn't really think that there was any kind of positive purpose to this especially thinking I'm a Christian, this shouldn't be happening to me, you know? Thanks. Um, so Lauren, your turn. <laughs> so how did you see God in and during the healing process? Okay, so I was in the hospital for a few days, but then I was out. I was good. I mean, not good, but you know. <laughs> um, after I was at the hospital. I was on the couch for a while because I couldn't move. I had a broken femur. My leg didn't work. Um, but a whole bunch of people from the church and from the prayer chain came over and prayed with me, did Bible studies with me, gave me verses to study, and all this stuff. And before the accident, this, all these things, they seemed so foreign to me. And I, I didn't want to accept these things. but. After the accident, I was focusing more on the positive, which was kind of strange. But I was accepting what these people were saying to me. And I saw like a true 
mission to it. Like just like we're doing here, we're going to people's houses that have things that are broken and we're fixing them. And I feel like that's what people from the church were doing in my life. And I feel like it was God telling people, like, I, I had a broken leg. People were coming to see me. I feel like God was like, this girl needs, this girl needs people in her life right now. And I'm not saying you have to get in a car accident and break your finger to realize these things. So, Marissa, um, the man that ran into you was a drunk driver. And so you were asked to write a letter to the man who caused the accident. Can you tell us about writing that letter? Um, yeah. So that was probably one of the hardest things I had to do. Um, because I knew what I had to do was forgive him. But finding out that somebody has a record and he was supposed to have a breathalyzer in his car but he used somebody else's car. Um, to just so he could drive under the influence. I remember being so angry looking at his record and just, you know, it was frustrating to me that someone could put somebody else's life at risk and to sacrifice, just to sacrifice somebody else's happiness for your own like that. Um, I ended up writing the letter and I think I started it off with, my name's Marissa Miller, and I was in a car accident, and I just want you to know that I forgive you. But, the way that I wrote it, I made the letter from my perspective of everything that happened. Because, I never looked at this until recently this way, but maybe I just needed to forgive him for my own good, and maybe he just needed it. Because sometimes God puts people in your life for positive reasons. But also sometimes there's a lesson for both people involved. And I would like to know, I would like to think that both parties gained something. I gained something spiritually and I hope he gained something mentally. He ended up serving time. So my thought process was maybe this is the last straw he needed in order to get right with himself. So he wouldn't do this to anybody else. Because if I'm being honest, if it was... Anybody out of the three, me, Lauren, and Emma, for this to happen to, or to, for, to struggle the most, it would probably be Lauren, just because she's probably the most strong out of the three of us. I don't know if I could went through what she went through, but like I said, it's never easy to forgive someone, and especially in this way, and it did take me a while because it, it just tore my family up. And she struggled so much, and the rest of us struggled so much, Emma and I even struggled. And it was just really hard to just say, I forgive you, after he had done that. And Lauren was also asked to write a victim's letter to the court. So what did you do? Um, after I was asked to write the victim's letter, I didn't want to at first. I was going to. But then I realized I had nothing to say to him. I I don't have malice towards him. I don't want to tell him how much he ruined my life or how much he made me struggle. I at that time I, I don't I didn't feel that. And I feel like that was the first like struggle God was giving me, or like the first thing he was putting on my plate, like as I was starting new, was giving me the strength to forgive him. And that's what I did. I I don't feel bad towards this guy. I feel like, and I might steal your question here, I might be stealing your thunder, but last night, Herb Bailey said that it's on my bracelet, I get to, not I have to. So I feel like, as horrible as it sounds, like that was a privilege given to me by God to grow. And to be here to tell you guys today what I went through and how it panned out for me, but yeah, that's how I feel about that. That's amazing. The incredible grace that you exhibited, and that only comes from God. When we talked about it one time at my house, there's nothing humanly 
possible out of that, to have that kind of forgiveness and to recognize the gift that God gave you and that is a beautiful thing. Marissa, I'm gonna final um, end with the last question, which was, I guess it's not. Okay, so you said that you asked God why, especially since you've been doing this good deed. So do you have any insight into that question today? Um, like I said, it took me a long time to understand why. Um, I asked myself that for probably at least another year after the accident, just why. Um, I was just, it was so easy to feel so bad for myself and be like, wow, Martha, you're really going through it. You know, it's just so easy to do that. And eventually I just had to like get up and look at the situation and there's just a lot of blessings in it, to be honest. Um, I think, like I said, more than more than I spent she was struggling and if that's what she needed, I mean, after that she's been on fire ever since and she just, I think that it just benefited her. And like I said, um, it's never easy to look at something like that and find any type of positive in it at all. Um, like I said, it took me forever, and I wasn't even as affected as maybe Lauren was. But it just, I stopped asking why so much, and I just started dealing with it, dealing with the problems. And like I said, every time I tell the story now, I understand why. And there was a purpose behind it. And even my friend, actually, our family friend actually cleaned up the car. They went to clean up the car. And the guy at the garage said, so you're telling me everybody in this car lived? And she said, yes. And he said, that's amazing. That, that's a miracle. I've never really seen anything as bad. And it was, it was really, it was really hard to go through, but I would probably, I would do, actually I would, I would do it over again if I had to. Um, and like I said, I look at it this way, maybe he needed it. Because I mean, during that time, I gives you a little bit, like maybe a little bit of insight and maybe a second chance that you might not get outside of, you know? So I try to look at from his perspective as well. All right, now this is the last question. <laughs> so, knowing what, um, you felt like when you're an 11 year old, what would you today tell that 11 year old Lauren that you know today that you wish you'd known then? That's kind of a loaded question. Um, I would tell her that it's it, it's not easy. I've even after that, it hasn't been the smooth sailing. Like I've been through trials and tribulations, but God is a God of help in trials and tribulations. That's that's how it works. And back then I was like, God of trials and tribulations, well I'm going through it. Well, like, where are you now? But I would just tell her that God is always there for you. He does, even when, even when it doesn't seem like it, He is, and He's always right behind you. Oh. <laughs>